that was going down in Ukraine. I mean, there was money laundering. You know, the Bidens were heavily involved in Ukraine. And you might say, well, Putin's a good guy going in there to clean all this up. But like I said, he could have done it eight years ago. That's the question. Why didn't Putin go in and fix this situation eight years ago? He didn't do it eight years ago because it didn't suit the globalists for this incursion to be made eight years ago because if it was, it wouldn't have the effect that it's having now. The effect of crashing the US financial system, which they're going to do themselves by putting sanctions on Russia, by banning certain countries from using the world reserve currency, the United States is deliberately bringing about a situation where its status is going to be removed as the world reserve currency. And that is going to have incredibly bad implications for the United States and for the lifestyle of the people within the United States. And all this is a distraction, folks, to keep you preoccupied with other things while they're destroying everything, destroying the food chain. They're even now talking, mainstream is saying that we're going to see massive food shortages. Look what's happening in Australia, the floods. The floods are just still going. I mean, this rain is just still going. And, of course, you know, we can't control the weather, they say. Yes, they can. You bring in the oceanic rain. Essentially, we're drawing oceanic rain systems that exist over the oceans into geographic targets. The technology uses electromagnetics. The technology relies on a signal that, we, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. But we're able to um, utilize that signal set in sequence to generate a um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. You know, and that's an Australian company, Acquiesce. That's an Australian company that admits they control the weather. That's what they do. And they're saying now it's going to rain for three months. They're expecting this rain to continue for three months. Above average rainfall is likely for northern and eastern Australia over the next three months. April is likely to be the wettest month for many regions. For March to May, high stream flows are expected at most forecast locations in the eastern mainland, with near median stream flows at many other locations. This is destroying all the crops in Australia. This is destroying the bread basket, the food basket. I've got friends in Australia who are virtually self-sufficient and they're now contacting me saying, our garden is destroyed. All of the food we grew is destroyed. Nothing will grow because it won't stop raining. The water, the ground is waterlogged. Everything's been washed away. That's what's happening, folks. It's all part of the same plan, all to keep you distracted. Keep you distracted from what's going on with and everything else because it's about to go to the next level. And it hasn't gone away. And the floods are, are, are ridiculous, folks. Floods in Byron Bay. Never seen floods in Byron Bay. I've been going to Byron Bay for 50 years. I lived in Byron Bay. It never floods in Byron Bay. It's not in a flood zone. Yet now the entire main street is underwater. You know, what brings this type of a situation about, folks? It's because they control the weather. I've been telling you they control the weather for years. And they do control the weather and they admit it themselves. You can even go and look at government cloud seeding operations. I mean, they're very happy to admit it when they've done cloud seeding and it's been very good and we've brought rain and it's all kept you happy. They admit it. They admit it. They were admitting it two or three years ago on mainstream news like Channel 9 or Channel 7 News. They talked about cloud seeding. Now people, oh no, it couldn't be the government doing this. They can't control the weather. Yes, they can. This is what they're distracting you from. They're now saying your heart attacks. Now climate change gives you heart attacks. They're now saying that warm weather, remember referees whistles will give you heart attacks as well. Um, but they're saying the warm weather, hot nights, will induce heart attacks in over 60 year olds. Of course, I remember my, all those heart attacks. My parents used to have once they reached 60 on a hot night in the summer. I was heart attacks every other week. Yeah, of course, you know. So you're going to see lockdowns coming back, folks, after the floods and all this bullshit. And they're not cleaning up the floods. They're not doing anything. They're going to lock you down again. So they're doing, folks, and while they're doing that, they're talking about bringing in a digital currency as well. They're saying that this is a restructuring of the entire world financial system, but using blockchain technology. Of course, they're using blockchain technology, but not cryptocurrency. They're actually bringing in their own government digital currency so that every single transaction will be tracked. This is something I was warning the blockchain people about back in 2000, 2017, 2018. I was warning people that, you know, with all this crypto stuff you're doing and all this blockchain tech you're doing, it's all very well, but don't think the government isn't building an umbrella over the top. And they're quite happy to let you build your own prison, and then they're going to take it over. 
You know, we've seen a, a lot of that talk this weekend about how we need to eliminate government and how it's all going to be good because we're moving towards all of this digital stuff and all of this crypto and it's all removing control from government and putting it in the hands of us, which is a good thing in many ways. But we've really got to look at what's happening with a lot of it as well with the, with the automation that's coming along because with whatever plan that you've got, Whatever idea that you've got that's going to be world changing, whether it's going to be cryptocurrency, whether it's permaculture, whatever it is, if you haven't factored into your plan the reality that this world is run by a criminal cacistocracy who are going to attempt to subvert and control everything you do, then it's going to fail right from the beginning. That's the problem. And you know, with the cryptocurrency, I mean, it's all really good. We're at a real crossroads here where we've got all the tools we need to lead us to safety but we need to factor in who's in control of things at the moment. And the world is run by criminals, it's simple as that. You know, and you look at this, um, this whole cryptocurrency thing, where it's going for financial freedom and all the stuff that it's bringing people, that's all very well and it's all very good to have that to get us to this state of abundance. But again, you've got to understand that the world is run by criminals. We have this cacistocracy which is running things. And thank you, Cynthia, for teaching this word at at schools and universities now. If people don't understand what a cacistocracy is, cacistocracy is defined as governance by the worst elements of society who govern entirely in their own interests to the permanent detriment of all other classes. And that's what we have. It was taken out of the dictionary about a hundred years ago. You can still find it in some books, but it was taken out. You know, we look at all this cryptocurrency stuff, yeah, it's leading us to safety, but there's so many people who cannot see that there may be another option. There may be other people who are looking at this who wish to co-opt it, convert it, and lead it into the direction that they want. Like I said, there's all this talk of, yes, we're going to remove government. We're going to have, have no need for government. But what we're going to be doing is handing control over to AI. And I will allow AI to govern me even less than I want to allow a politician to govern me. And I've also said that Crypto and all of these digital currencies, are, I mean, they're good for a while, but again, it's a short window, and I think it's going to close by 2024, by the end of 2024, because soon you're going to need complete biometric ID in order to get online. This is now being introduced in South Africa. South Africa are bringing it in in order to combat fraud, of course. Not to control you folks, just to combat fraud, it's to make it a safer world and a better world, of course. They're bringing in new biometric IDs. When you get a new SIM card for your phone, you're going to need to be registered biometrically in order to activate the SIM card. The SIM card, of course, will have all your bio data tied to the SIM card and, of course, tied to the phone number as well. South Africa, they're doing this. And you'll be saying, oh, no, they'll never do it here. Of course they will, folks, because it's all part of the same system. You know, they went and introduced that new monetary system, the new financial system, China and Russia. This happened in on December 17, 2021. So last year they did that. What do you think they did it then, folks? They did it in preparation for all this. It's all part of the same play. The whole thing is part of the same play. Now the United States has taken this attitude where it's going to penalise people simply because they're not agreeing with what the United States wants, it's going to ban them from using the world reserve currency. This changes everything. And the United States cannot maintain its position as the world's reserve currency while this is happening. The food shortages, fires, floods, natural disasters, of course they're calling them, but they're not natural at all. Things are going to escalate to the next level. And like I said, I think humanity is going to split in two. It's the only way you're really going to get through this. You're going to have to either capitulate, put up with all this biometric scanning and everything else they want to do, or disconnect from the system altogether. Remember what it means to be human. I mean, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have any of this stuff. 20, 30 years ago, we used to have to call up on old dial-up phones. We used to have to get in our cars and drive to see people. And, you know, we used to have to do human things. We used to have to know our way around. We used to have to know how to read and write. We don't do any of those things anymore. everything we've been taught is a lie and the older I get the more I embrace this this statement the more I look at it the more horrifying it becomes and the more horrified I, bec I get realizing how deep 
the lies are, how far back it goes, and how deeply it's entrenched, and how how the tentacles of the lies, how they've infiltrated every crack and crevice of our existence into every society, into every industry, into every part of 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 our daily lives and what we do and how we live and how we inter interact. It is truly spectacular. And you realize that this is not something that could have happened overnight. This is something that must have happened over a very, very long time. This system that was created for us, that's supposed to be serving us, is exactly the opposite. It's a system that was created to prevent us from reaching success and finding the truth and, uh, and overcoming hurdles and obstacles that stand in our way. And um, this makes it very clear when you start looking into this, everything we've been told is a lie. It seems to me, and it's become very clear that the bigger the lie, the more we believe it. They're not worried about lying about the little things. They lie about the big things, the really, really big things. And then they just fudge the details. They fudge the details. They skew the narrative and they skew it in the direction that they want it to go. And very quickly, you are so far removed from the truth. And what really happened is that nobody can make out what the hell is going on. So the, the lies that we've been told, again, are everywhere. It's in our history, about our history about our species, about our origins, science. The science books are filled with lies. It is quite spectacular, especially when you've gone through medical school like I have, studying pharmaceutics, and you like, get out of there, and then you start looking at what it is that they actually taught me, and you realize that it's got nothing to do with, with wisdom, nothing to do with finding solutions for problems, and nothing to do with taking care and providing health. It's all programming for you to leave the school and be able to implement the program that they gave you, the program and the guided instruction manual for how to treat disease, how to treat this, what to prescribe, when to prescribe it, and, uh, and what you can and cannot do, because there are laws that guide that whole industry. It's not just about that they're lying to us. It's about how they integrated the lies and the mechanism of deception propaganda, how they integrated that into every fabric and into facet of our lives and our society. The technology that we use, obviously, um, health, healthcare and, and money. And then the big one is the cosmos, is the lies about the cosmos, who we are and what it really looks like. So how do they sustain such lies? And this is where you realize that this is, a, this is a huge operation that cannot happen overnight. This is something that has to, must have happened over an extended period of time with a fully encompassing controlled propaganda and disinformation campaign that covers all organs of state, large corporations, and a lockstep strategy that they write well in advance, that's planned decades and centuries ahead, handed down from generation to generation of the global elite to all state leaders through their international agencies like the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the World Trade Organization, UNESCO, believe it or not, UNESCO is just as big a culprit in all of this because UNESCO deals with our ancient cultural heritage sites and UNESCO is probably guilty of some of the most heinous and unimaginable crimes against native people of the world. And, uh, and then the cartel of media giants that they use as the voice and the spokesperson to promote their disinformation and their propaganda. The moment you hear that this is a UNESCO site, you should get very nervous and very worried because UNESCO is an international organization controlled by the global elite and the bankers, the banking families and the, the, the appointed uh, stooges, to go into all countries under the guise of, of humanitarian and protection of ancient her heritage sites and protecting our history. What UNESCO does is they take control of our ancient sites, and then the people of the country lose control over that ancient site. 
and everything around it and about it. UNESCO gains complete control over it and has a final decision of what can be done and cannot be done. This is one of the institutions. So they take control of our educational institutions from the, from the um, educational material in primary schools, preschools, primary schools, high schools, and most importantly, the tertiary educations like Oxford University and, and most other universities on earth. So the moment they have the universities under their control, now, now we create a hierarchy of, of educational fascism and educational dictatorship, because the higher you climb the ladder in this educational institution game, I guess, the more brainwashed and, and the, the more brainwashed you become, and more, the more you become prepared for them to appoint you to positions of power and control that they can trust because they've now trained you really, really well. Not everyone that has gone through all this education is brainwashed, but most of the people that reach those levels in the educational institutions are. Otherwise, they would not be working in those. If they had their own mind, they followed their own intuition, followed their own research, they would have long ago questioned and challenged their establishments and they would have been expelled. And the next big thing is take control of the research institutions. And the way that they take control of the research institutions is the big corporations are always the ones that do the big research. You and I can't do the research in my garage. I know how difficult it is to do research. In the research that I'm trying to do in the ancient ruins of Southern Africa, in the many samples that I've taken, in the many fossils and rocks that I've collected, just to get scans done of these rocks, to get x-rays done, uh, proton emission x-rays uh, that, that really penetrate deep into these fossils to show you exactly the internal structure. I can't afford that. I can't afford to have all the soil samples scanned if there's gold residue in there. Basic, simple research that I can't even do because it's so expensive. So you can imagine how the top level research institutes, the medical research institute, the genetics ins institutes, the stem cell research institute, the technology researchers and so forth. The, it's only the large corporations with the money that can afford those research institutions. And then they don't share the knowledge and information. Everything that comes out of those research institutions is their, is their uh, uh, privilege, is, is their intellectual property. They only share what they want to and put out what they want to and keep the rest so they can control humanity and regain control over their area, their industry, and the products that they manufacture and design and distribute. And it's these same research institutions that provide the research knowledge and information that gets put into the textbooks from pre-primary schools, whether it's history, whether it's literacy, whether it's language, or they plan the programming and the the very early le early level propaganda and pro programming and mind control with how they now structure the content of our very early learning books and textbooks to the more advanced textbooks in medicine and science and engineering and technology and 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 physics and science and so forth so now you know the 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 information in our textbooks only comes from the very large corporations that can afford these research institutions and the lab so by controlling the labs, controlling the educational institutions, you pretty much control the flow of knowledge and what goes in and what gets taught at schools and what does not get taught at schools. And you know by now that any teacher that strays or lecturer at university that strays away from the textbook, teaching what's in the textbook, gets fired, loses their job. And you realize it's a draconian system that has been imposed on us it's nothing to do with education and learning. It's all programming us and preparing us to be very obedient future labor force. That's ultimately what it comes down to. And then the important thing, you start the kids as early as possible. Start brainwashing the children as early as possible. Brainwashing them in the content of the textbooks, in how it's presented, how it's taught, how we, how we control the behavior, how we make children do things, follow orders, et cetera, et cetera and break down our natural ability of creativity. The entire school process is a very cleverly disguised uh, propaganda machine and brainwashing manipulation machine to break down the very early creative abilities and creative skills that we have as young children and replace them with a dictatorial um, fear uh, fear mongering, uh, you know, obey your teachers, obey your masters, obey your superiors, obey your leaders, and so forth. 
Their control of the media is one of the key things. Obviously, you are aware of the fact that all the major media and news networks are controlled, and through that, they 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 spew the ongoing, never-ending, brainwashing, repetitive propaganda that they create for us. The developing story. They develop the story. They create the story. They develop the story, and then they turn it into reality. The developing story scenario in the hundreds and thousands of TV channels that are controlled by the international um, media um, distribution networks, the platform that distribute the, the content for all the news networks. Um, they use mind control tricks, mind control tricks and tools that are not really understood by the public. And this is the other thing. It's like people don't understand certain words, certain phrases, certain um, the way that you answer, the way that you ask questions, the way that you intimidate people, and they train the, the journalists on these major news networks, go through these schools where they trained to do this. And it's spectacular to what levels these people go. So mind control tricks and tools not understood by the mainstream public. And then over and over, keep promoting through the media, through the textbooks, through the education system, keep promoting the globalist agenda in every possible subject, in everything imaginable. The globalist agenda is technology, healthcare, minerals, industry, corporations, um, countries, borders, um, you name it, that's the globalist agenda. Currency, money, obviously, banking, central banking, all these things that they have absolute control over. Always make people believe that they're in control, that they know what's going on, that the rest of the people have no idea what's going on, that we just dumb stooges that have to hang on every word they tell us because they're very smart and only they know how it works. And then finally, in this process, obviously, there are many other things they do. I've just really touched upon a few of the most obvious ones that you probably are aware of. The final thing that the, the global elite's objective is make life as difficult as possible for as many people as possible. And that is really, for me, that's probably the toughest and the most heartbreaking part of this whole global elite control system. And the dumbing down of the people, the disinformation, the propaganda campaign. While the people are disinformed, naive, ignorant, beautiful souls that are born and live life believing what they're told and just simply believing that the government is their friend looking after them, the government will never do anything that will harm them. And these beautiful, naive uh, souls, naked souls that, that are just so trustworthy and trusting, I mean, uh, just go out there and they just, cannot, they just cannot succeed in life. And life is so hard and so difficult and they just can't understand why life should be so hard. And, um, and this is why they have to make life so difficult because they have to keep people tied up and occupied so they don't have enough time, spare time to go and do research to get informed, to get educated, and to become wise, to attain wisdom and break through that, um, that global control barrier and the control system that has been imposed on us and realize what's going on. Realize who we are, where we come from, and why we're here, and what has been done to humanity. So this is what they do. And this is why so many people struggle for most of their lives. Think about the, the statistical probability. And this, this is a, a simple scientific physics mathematical argument. Now, if you study, um, if you study statistical probability, like flipping a coin, heads or tails, flipping a coin, heads or tails, ends up more or less 50-50, 49-51, 48-52, 50-50, and it varies all the time, very close to, to evening out. Statistical probability normally balances things out. Because in nature, keep in mind, we're going to talk about nature, the structure of nature. So the toroidal fields that manifest as a primordial shapes of everything in creation, these beautiful balanced toruses, these toroidal fields that vibe, spin this way and from this side and opposite way and this side and where they meet, they form that beautiful accretion disk and, the, and the, the accretion disk and the toroidal, this perfectly balanced toroidal field. This is a balanced organism in nature. And this is how everything should work, balanced, 50-50, uh, the yin and the yang, and so forth. The fact that 
out of 8 billion people in the world, 7, 7 billion people wake up every day and they go to work and they work hard and they do something. They dig trenches, they build cars, they build, make building materials, they make beds, they do washing, they look after children, they, we grow food, we bake food, and we do so many different things, make clothes and, and invent things. So every day, 7 billion people go out there and they do something in the hope that they'll better their life, to invent something, to create, invent new technology and so forth. And out of those 7 billion people, majority of the global population, very few of those people ever attain a happy life and attain happiness, prosperity, and abundance. Most of the people alive today die in poverty, misery, unhappy, disgruntled, confused, and wondering what the hell happened. Why did they have to go through this, this life and this torture and this misery? And, and it's this complete imbalance that clearly shows us that this is not part of a natural, balanced, organic, statistical probability outcome. The fact that so few people succeed in attaining their dreams or being able to create this or create that, their natural, our natural skills and abilities, clearly shows us that there is a program, some sort of a program that controls all of the goings on in the world that prevent people from ever achieving their dreams, making life as difficult as possible for as many of us as possible. And then obviously we need to continue these lies and propaganda and control, not just for a decade or 10 decades or, or 200 years. We need to continue this for thousands of years, actually. And this is where it becomes really, really mind-blowingly interesting to, to contemplate the idea that this lie and this control mechanism has been going on for thousands of years, not just for the last few 200 years or 250 years since the Rothschilds took control of the global financial empire or created their fi financial empire that run the world, but that this financial empire actually has its origins some 4,000 BC, 4,000 years BC, when the first money was introduced to humanity as a tool of control and tool of enslavement. When we realize where money comes from and what it really is, that it's a tool of enslavement and has been, we've been using it for thousands of years under control by those who control the supply of money, things change. And we realize that this control mechanism has been going on for much longer than we could possibly imagine. Many people say, well, if you don't like this system, what's the system you want to put in and i'm saying well you know i don't know i don't know what freedom looks like we've never been free yeah all i know is that we can't go on living in this slavery system and if we all put our heads together we'll find something that does work yeah you know and i'm of the firm believer that there's nothing really wrong with the system what is wrong is is in ourselves you know what is wrong is our our failure to um, put morals above above law to mm -hmm. put people above economics and all this sort of stuff, you know, our failure to do the right thing and all that we do, you know, if we were to do the right thing and all that we do, that would ripple out and the system would have to change around us. Corruption and all of this stuff and war and degradation, this couldn't exist in, in the world if we were doing the right thing and we didn't tolerate wrong behavior. Right. So, you know, that, that's really where, where it all comes down. And if we do that and we change the way we interact with the people around us and the world has to change around us organically, that's really how to do it. And that's the big problem for people is that they want the world to change, but they don't want to have to act themselves. They want someone to simply send them the newsletter and to hear that the world has changed and they mm -hmm. can continue going to work, you know. And that's the problem, that the fact that they believe they need to go to work and they need to do all these things. You know, most people, unfortunately, who are speaking out against the system don't really want freedom. All they want is a higher wage and less hours. Yeah. That's what they want. <clears throat> yep. And that's an unfortunate reality. You know, we go through our lives just cowed and, and sitting around and doing what we're told all the time because we, we're scared to speak up. And we don't realize that the people that are doing this are just people just like us. It, it, it's nobody mm -hmm. special. There's nobody who has any more value than anybody else. So, you know, just get involved. I think it's really important for people to do so. And just stand up and start questioning authority. Do it in the right way. Do it eloquently. You just ask these people why they believe they have a right of ownership over you. 
And that's what we should ask government when they come to ask things of us and make us do things. We should simply ask who they think they are because they're our employees and we don't employ them to do what they're doing. But when we go into court, we don't do any of that sort of stuff. If they ever come for us, you know, and we do go to court, we get someone else to speak for us, we plead, we beg, we do all these things. We never simply ask the question of who do you think you are? Why do you think that this legislation you're putting in place has any effect over me? Why do you believe you have a right of ownership over me? Why do you bring me in here to cause harm against me? What do you believe you have the right to do this? Who gave you that right? Who are you anyway? You're someone that we appoint to power. How can you believe do you have such a right of ownership over another human being? What do you believe gives you the power for this? What do you believe you get it from government? Well, where does government get its power from? It gets it from the people. Where do we get our power from? We get it from God. So unless you're claiming you're a higher authority than God, then I don't see where you fit into the equation. Who are you? Well, what is this? Where did this legislation come from? Who wrote the legislation which is causing me harm? Why did you even believe you had the right to bring me in here? Who's the person who wrote this thing down on a piece of paper? Bring him in here so I can talk to him because I want to know what his problem is with me and I'd like to know why he presumes that he can cause harm towards me because he can't. I'd like to know who this person is. If he believes he can cause harm against me then I would suggest he is sitting in abuse of the office that he's holding and I'd like to question him about that. I'd like to question him about the validity of this legislation anyway, even before you believe you can inflict it upon me, because he can't write legislation like this without it being vetted by someone. Obviously, no one is because it's legislation that's causing you harm. So what's going on here? Who are you people? And how do you believe that you have the right to do this? Well, when you put the strength of the community around you, you can make a difference. You know, we don't have to go and protest. We don't have to you know, have violent revolution or anything, if we simply withdraw support from this system, yep. you know, non-compliance, yep. and have the support of our community around us in doing so, we change the world in a day. It's really that simple. We hold the whole thing up. So it isn't that anybody has to go out there and get involved. The best way to get involved is to get uninvolved yeah, with the system, exactly. simply disconnect from it. So at the Occupy movement, I was saying it's all very well that you've, you've all got together and you know there's a problem now. But there's no point going and occupying Wall Street because you have no plan. Mm. You have no plan for the future that you want. You just know that things are all messed up. You don't want this, but you don't know what you want. You don't need to occupy Wall Street. We already occupy the entire earth, but we right. don't occupy ourselves. You stay home and occupy yourself, and you're going to find that you'll make a big difference. I'm actually trying to push forth, a, you know, start off with one day a month and hopefully build that up very quickly to more. But uh, the 15th of every month, non-compliance day. If you can stay home from work, do it. But at the very least, don't spend any money. Don't use your credit cards and yeah. don't support the system for one day every month, the 15th of every month. Start off slow, see how many people we can get involved, and let's build this up to a global stand of non-compliance against this system. That's what we need, you know. Can you imagine all those dollars not going into the profiteers just one day? One day, months. one day, they were, it would send a billions shock wave around the planet, brother. It really would. You imagine all the people sitting in Wall Street looking at the screen, yeah. waiting for the numbers to change, and they don't change. They'd be having a meltdown. It would send a shock wave around the world, and it would, yeah, would send it would. a huge wave of confidence around the world too. People would, would think, yeah, look what we just did. Okay, let's do it two days next month, and then, right. hey, let's just do it a week, and let's just stop spending anything, and let's just start supporting <clears> each other. Until yeah. the system changes and these politicians are held accountable for their actions, you know. We hold the whole thing up, brother. And if we yeah. pull financial support from it just in for one day, it would it would change everything. Just one day of noncompliance would change the whole world. What if the Constitution no longer applied? What if the whole purpose of the Constitution was to limit the government? What if Congress's enumerated powers in the Constitution no longer limited Congress? but were actually used as a justification to extend Congress's authority over every realm of human life. What if the president, meant to be an equal to Congress, has instead become a democratically elected, term-limited monarch? What if the president assumed that everything he did was legal just because he's the president? What if he could interrupt your regularly scheduled radio and TV programming for a special message from him? What if he could declare war on his own? What if he could read your emails and your texts without a search warrant? What if he could kill you without warning? 
What if Supreme Court justices no longer looked to the Constitution to determine the constitutionality of a law, but rather simply to what justices who preceded them thought about it? What if the rights and principles guaranteed in the Constitution have been so distorted in the past 200 years as to be unrecognizable by the founders? What if the 50 states were no longer sovereign entities, equals to each other, and parents of the federal government they voluntarily constituted? What if the states were mere provinces of a totally nationalized and fully centralized government? What if the Constitution was amended stealthily, not by constitutional amendments duly ratified by the states, but by the constant and persistent expansion of the federal government's role in our lives? What if the federal government decided if its own powers were proper and constitutional? What if the Constitution were no longer the supreme law of the land? What if you needed a license from the government to speak, to assemble, or to protest against the government? What if the government didn't like what you planned to say and so it didn't give you the license? What if the right to keep and bear arms only applied to the government? What if posse comitatus, the federal law that prohibits our military from occupying our streets, were no longer in effect? What if the government considered the military an adequate dispenser of domestic law enforcement? What if cops looked and acted like troops and you couldn't distinguish the military from the police? What if you were not secure in your person, in your papers, and in your property? What if federal agents could write their own search warrants in defiance of the Constitution? What if the government could decide when you were and were not entitled to a jury trial? What if the government could take your property whenever it wanted? What if the government could continue prosecuting you until it got the verdict it wanted? What if the government could force you to testify against yourself simply by labeling you a domestic terrorist? What if the government could torture you until you said what the government wanted to hear? What if people running for president actually supported torture? What if the government tortured your children to get to you? What if government judges and government lawyers intimidated juries into convicting the innocent? What if the government could send you to your death and your innocence meant nothing so long as the government's procedures were followed? What if America's prison population, the largest in the world, was a cruel and unusual way for a country to be free? What if half the prison population never harmed anyone but themselves? What if the people had no rights except those the government chose to let them have? What if the states had no rights except to do as the federal government commanded? What if our elected officials didn't really live among us, but instead all had their hearts and homes in Washington, D.C.? What if the government could strip you of your rights because of where your mother was when you were born? What if the income tax was unconstitutional? What if the states were convinced to give up their representation in Congress? What if the government tried to ban you from using a substance in your body that is older than the government itself? What if voting didn't mean anything anymore because both political parties stand for big government? What if the government could write any law, regulate any behavior, and tax any event? The Constitution be damned. What if the government was the reason we don't have a Constitution anymore? What if you could love your country but hate what the government has done to it? What if sometimes to love your country you had to alter or abolish the government? What if Jefferson was right? What if that government is best which governs least? What if I'm right? What if the government is wrong? What if it is dangerous to be right when the government is wrong? What if it is better to perish fighting for freedom than to live as a slave? What if freedom's greatest hour of danger is now?
In case you find these videos useful, please share them with others so we can help them too. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos and updates. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Peace.